Good morning, Michigan City High School. I'm Jai Tucker. And I'm Sofia Garcia, and for Tatiana Miller. And here are your morning announcements. Juniors, those that missed the original SAT testing, the makeup testing window starts tomorrow. Emails have been sent out to you all before spring break for students who need to make up their SAT testing. Friday Night Live will be on April 29th from 6 to 10 in the Michigan City High School gym. There will be an open gym, food, video game truck, ping pong, activities, community organization, and a pop-up art with the Lebesnik Center for the Arts. It is open to all Michigan City High School students. You must show your school ID to enter. If you have any questions, contact Ms. Beshaman. Calling all hoopers. There will be a three-on-three -three basketball tournament beginning every Monday in May. Check out all the signs posted up around the school or talk to Coach Wells about getting your team signed up. There will be a boy and girls division team based on the number of teams. Come on out and show your game. Class of 2022 prom theme is the Enchanted Fairy Tale Happily Ever After. It's at the Blue Chip Casino, the Stardust Event Center. It's on May 13th from 5.30 to 10.30. Only juniors and seniors. You have to bring your ID to get into prom. Tickets are $55 per person. Tickets will be on sale the last week of April only. You have to have your ID to purchase tickets. The red carpet will be on live stream at 5.30. No parents or outside guests will be allowed in. Dinner begins at 6.30. No students will be let in after 6.30. If you leave before 9.45, you will not be able to go to post prom, which is at City Bowling Alley from 10.30 to 12.30. You cannot come back if you decide to leave early. Students on social probation will not be able to buy tickets. Also, dates from other schools will be permitted. A permission slip must be signed and completed and turned into the office before tickets are purchased. Students have to be at the school half the day to attend. All school rules must be followed. There will be a prom king and queen. Voting will take place at the school. You are invited to attend the Essence Rares 2022nd Annual Master Ball. Michigan City High School's own Sierra Dabney, Javon France, Deja Gardner, Christina Fitzpatrick, Shalise Gilliam, Jaden Smallwood, Kimana Spicer, and Keenan Tucker Jr. will be presented. The event is Sunday, April 24th at the Blue Chip Stardust Ballroom. It costs $45 to pay in advance and $50 at the door if it's still available. And now for our segment, Unpacking the Pack. I'm Maria Colasso with... I'm Coach Fear. What does a normal day of work look like for you? Uh, normal day, I come in um, probably 7 o'clock, I make rounds to the gym, uh, make sure everything is secured, uh, make sure things are locked up, uh, get equipment out, um, you know, I hook up my phone because my phone, our phone hooks up to the gym, we put it away every day, um, and then I get ready for the day and get ready to teach kids and give, let, do lessons and, um, you know, just teach my six classes for the day and um, go from there. What takes up most of your time? Um, attendance, to be honest with you. <laughs> attendance takes up most of my time during classes. I wish we could just get in and, and get it done and then, uh, you know, get started every, every time, every second that we waste, we, you know, we, it's less time we get to play. So, yeah. Right. What is your favorite thing about working here at MCHS? Oh, hands down the students. I, the, the kids here are awesome. Um, I look for, because we're all different. We're all, we all have different backgrounds. We all have um, you know, we're, we're a different race, we're different cultures, um, and, and I have an opinion that everyone is unique in their own way, so I, every kid that comes in my class, I want them to know me for me, and I want to know them for them, so I, I love the kids, I love the kids here, and I love the adults too, don't get me wrong, but I, I love the kids, I love being around kids, so, yep. You're in your 11th year at the high school, on top of nine years previously at elementary schools. How would you say you have grown and learned throughout these last 20 years? I've always had patience, but I think what I've grown in is just to have more patience about things that are going on around me that I can't control. Um, I, I truly believe that if everyone just had a little more patience, um, the little things that happen wouldn't go into big things. 
So I think I've grown in that aspect that um, you just need a little more patience, I think, throughout the day. Things happen and we can't control them. And then, um, you know, also just to, just to be true to yourself and be yourself. I think I, think I when I first started teaching, I wanted to be somebody that I wasn't um, because I thought it would be better for everyone. But in reality, I'm, I'm great just who I am. So I, you know, I kind of exploit who I am and I, you know, you don't get what you see is what you get, uh, what you interact with is what you get. I don't change from one day to the next, so. What is your secret to staying a positive and cheerful light for the students? 100% humor. You got to have humor. I mean, life's too short to not have humor. Um, again, it goes back to what I said. You, you have a little situation and something happened and it didn't go your way. You have two choices. You can just make that a whole big ensemble of drama or you can shut it down. You can have a little bit of humor and, and let it go and, and move on. And so, um, you know, I, I have to have humor regardless of what position I'm in, what I'm doing, who I'm talking to. You got to cut the intensity in a conversation. So I have humor. I laugh all the time and, and everybody knows that. So, yeah. What are some challenges you have faced and how do you overcome them? Uh, you mean like teaching in general or just being in the building or life in general? What do you mean? Anything? Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think some of the challenges that like we have in our building is, and I think it stems from challenges even in, in our society, people are definitely misunderstood. And I think if we take the time to just talk to those people and, and, and get a sense, I'm a huge, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, and, and I think sometimes in the building that that's everybody. I mean, I, you know, in my opinion, that's students, that, that's administrators, that's teachers, that's staff, that's, you know, anybody. Give everyone in this building some value before you go and say something or, or do something against, against someone else. Um, I think that's a challenge. I, I struggle that, with that in life as well. I don't know someone and I, and I have to come into contact with them. Um, you know, they don't have to like me, but you don't have to be rude. You don't have to be, you know, I don't, I don't have to be rude to them. You know, we're, we're all in this, we're all in this together basically. You know, at the end of the day, there, you know, there's, we're all doing the same thing here every day. No, no matter if we're, you know, in school or, you know, in life or, you know, in general. So, I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest challenge for me sometimes because I don't understand why some people are the way they are. Mm -hmm. And it's just because we walk all different uh, walks of life. So, um, but I, I take that into consideration all the time every day when I come into the building. Um, you know, I know that we're, we're all coming from different avenues. So, uh, you know, patience is a big thing for me. And, but it's a struggle for me sometimes. Yeah, definitely. And last question, what words of wisdom would you give to the current students at MCHS? I, really, I probably could give a, you know, give a lot of, of words of wisdom, but, um, you know, if, if people see me in the, you know, kids see me in the hallway, adults see me in the hallway, um, you know, just, just be kind. Like, you know, I mean, life is just way too short to not be kind. Even if something is, is not going well in your life, it's not, things are not good, that person that's walking across from you has no idea. So why take it out on them? Why be rude to them? Why be obnoxious to them? Um, you know, sometimes kids and adults take things way too seriously, way too seriously. So, I mean, my advice to the students is you, you've only got four years here. Make the best of it. Um, you know, I, I tell students all the time, you know, you've got, you've got one shot at it. Make the best of it. Whatever you're dealing with at home, whatever you're dealing with here, um, if things are hard, life is hard. So, you know, if, if you're having trouble with someone, you know, talk it out. Don't, you know, I, I feel like sometimes there's a pecking order in this school. There is no pecking order. We're, we're all here together. Nobody's better than the person walking next to you. Nobody's worse than the person walking next to you. You're, you're all here and, you know, you're all here for the same reason. We're all here for the same reason. And I think sometimes as teachers, um, you know, we think that, you know, we have to get you from, from A to B. And that's true, but we also want you to want to get from A to B. And if you don't want to get from A to B, then it's, it's more of a struggle for us to get you there. Um, I tell my kids, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll get you wherever you want, want to go. You got to put a little bit of effort into it. And, you know, so, I mean, just 
you know, with all of that kind of like, you know, Coach Fear screaming off the mountaintop, just be kind. People will help you. Find people in this building that you know have your back. Utilize those people. If you think they have their, your back and they don't, then walk away from them. They don't have your back. So, I mean, that that is a community, you know, that, that I see in this building and I see, you know, some days I see awesome glimpses of that where I see kindness and happiness and then sometimes I see one person that is having a bad day or negative and it spreads like wildfire. We have to help those people get better. We have to help those people know that we have their back. So, um, you know, but overall with all that, you know, long speech is just to be kind, be kind to people. You know, it's not hard to smile or say hello, even if you don't know them, you know, what's up, how's it going? Stuff like that. Period. And back to the studio. Let's see what sports are this week with Wolves Den Sports. I'm Austin Decker, and I'm here with Coach Megacy. So, Coach Megacy, how long have you been working in MCHS? 13 years. So I know you are a basketball coach and a softball coach. Correct. How do you transition into going into each sport? Well, it's pretty easy, but I'll be honest. Basketball is a long season, about five months long as far as the season goes. So I take about a week off. Uh, coach Krasinski, who's our head coach for softball, um, allows me to take that week off. So I take a week off, and then um, – you know, it's hard, actually, because basketball, you kind of um, winding down from the season, you know, the highs and the lows of, of coaching the team. So then um, usually about two weeks in, I'm all softball. Even though we do basketball workouts, you know, during that time in the gym, the transition to softball is pretty easy. And like right now as we speak, you see I got my Michigan City softball sweatshirt on. I'm all softball right now. So I know you guys had a game. How do you guys plan for the team you guys are going to play? Uh, one more time, I'm sorry. How do you guys plan for the team you guys are going to play that? Oh, sure. Yeah, so for, for softball, a little more difficult in softball than basketball. Basketball, you know, we have huddle, which is, um, you know, where we can go ahead and scout games um, on, you know, looking on, on the Internet. And um, I can go watch games as well. Softball, not as easy. So what I do for softball, what Coach, uh, Coach Krasinski is, um, lets me do, is I go ahead and I make sure – that I um, talked to coaches from the two previous games, the teams we play. You know, what did they do? What kind of pitches did they throw? Things like that. And then I'll go ahead and um, ask them to send me a snapshot of their scorebook. So, Coach Megacy, I know you guys have to plan for the games for softball. How do you do that? Well, for softball, a little bit different from basketball. In basketball, we have huddle, which we're able to watch games on the TV, on the online. The kids can go and watch the games by themselves, and it's a real good scouting tool. Um, now, my, in softball, it's a little bit different. We can't go to games as much because we're playing almost every day. You get a lot of rainouts, and um, weather makes it very difficult to play all of your games, so you're rescheduling constantly. So the best way to scout for softball, for me anyway, I'll get a hold of coaches from the two previous games that our opponent has played, talk to them about, you know, what kind of um, batters they have, what kind of pitches the pitcher throws, and then I'll ask them to take a snapshot of their scorebook so I can see where the balls are being hit. And that's kind of the best way for us to scout softball. So I know you do basketball and softball, but what do you do on your off time? Off time? There is no off time. It's, um, it's, it's 12 months a year, basketball, softball, um, really busy. As soon as softball's over, um, we get right into basketball in June, in the month of June. I'm with my girls, well, pretty much every day except for Sundays in June. So we really um, go hard at it in July. I do take a little bit of downtime in July. We do some open gyms with the girls. Uh, we do elementary workouts, middle school workouts. But honestly, it's 12 months a year, and you actually know, do that. If you want to be successful, we want to make sure the girls are successful as they can be. Um, give them the best opportunities for getting to college. And to do that, we need to work hard. So we're doing it 12 months a year. But obviously, downtime, you know, um, when I have it, you know, I enjoy, you know, um, going out, you know, doing things with my girlfriend, um, whether it be going to dinner or um, going out of town, going to visit friends, relatives, things like that. We enjoy that. I love to go watch White Sox baseball games. Notice I said White Sox, not Cubs. Um, unless it's a White Sox-Cubs game, in which case I hope the White Sox will win. Um, but summertime, I enjoy going to the beach. I live in St. Joe, Michigan, so I'm very close to the beach up there, and I really enjoy my time 
um, you know, going to the beach and spending time with my family. Um, I have two step boys that are um, very fond of. They're 24 years old, and one of them is getting married this July. So we're planning for that right now. And um, definitely my three babies, my miniature dachshunds, uh, Diggy, Lola, and Sophie. And, of course, my, um, my grandchild, which is a black lab. And is there anything else you would like to say? Well, absolutely. If we can move, move just, just come, come this way right here. And this classroom right here is my department head, Mrs. Freitag. I just want to give a shout out to my awesome department head and my social studies department. I love teaching here at Michigan City High School. I know this is a lot about my coaching, but the teaching is most important, teaching the kids. Um, I have wonderful students, as I have one right here that I had in U.S. history class. But um, again, none of that is possible without that lady right there, Mrs. Freitag. So thank her and our administrative staff for everything they do for us. And back to you in the studio. On Tuesday, April 19th, in the Michigan City High School Auditorium, the Anime Club is hosting its annual cosplay contest. All teachers and students are invited to attend. The images that you see on the screen before you were from the Comic-Con that the Anime Club went to. The dress-up is anime characters, superheroes, as you saw Mr. Parker, and anything else your heart desires. Please join us for this fun on Tuesday, April 19th. And now on to senior shoutouts. What senior is it going to be this week? Hi guys, my name is Alana Hashim. This is the FCHS TV senior shoutout segment, and I'm here with... Hi, I'm Katie Tarr. I'm a senior here at the high school, and I'm in charge of our sports program for our yearbook. Okay, so I'm going to be asking Kate a few questions. So, what do you enjoy most about being a big part of yearbook? I would say just being able to meet so many people and I've been encouraged to go out and like look at different sports events and go to different stuff, which I never was a huge fan of before, but it's really helped me like boost my confidence a little bit, which I really enjoy. Because you do go out your way to go to every sporting event. Or yeah. You take if it's class. not me, I'm making sure someone in our class is going to at least one event a week. Okay. And then what are some challenges you faced throughout your time in yearbook? I would say we have a lot of new people this year in our class. So it's a lot of sophomores and freshmen that have never participated in yearbook or really been a part of anything like that. So... Really just making sure everyone is participating and like along the way they're actually learning what we're doing. Yes. Especially we have a lot of seniors right now, so once we graduate, they're gonna be the ones taking over. So I hope that they can do well for us. Yeah, and they have a great person to look up to. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And then what is it like being the sports editor? I love being the sports editor. It does have a lot of roles to do with it that I wasn't quite sure of before I started. I kind of went in a little blindly. But I really enjoy it. I love going to all of the different events and creating the pages for different sports and like tagging each per you have to like tag each person in the page at least three times or something. And I really like being able to see all of these different pictures coming in and we get a lot from Mr. Mars who helps us out a lot. So I just really like that. So shout out to Mr. Mars. Yeah, <laughs> you're awesome. We appreciate you so much. And then if you could relive one moment of your high school career, what would it be? Okay, I'm honestly not quite sure. All of our school dances have been super, super fun. But I would say my freshman year I was in cheer. And if I could just do cheer one more time just to have that experience again, I definitely would. They definitely, all of them I was so shy before. And they just like boosted my confidence like it was nothing. And they were all great. So I definitely appreciated that. Okay. And then um, what advice would you like to give our underclassmen? I would say don't be scared to like go out and talk to everyone and meet new people because in four years you're never going to see them again. They're not going to remember who you are that well. Like just do whatever you want and who cares what other people have to say about it because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Just have a blast and if you're happy with yourself in that moment then you're doing something right. 
That's great. That's a great advice. And then, is there anything you would like to say to the class of 2022? I'm really proud of all of us. I really am because we've had a lot of struggles and having different principles each year has definitely been a huge struggle for us. And during COVID, a lot of our grades, that was a huge issue. But I'm overall just really proud of us and seeing how far we've all come. And I get super excited seeing everyone posting their little college acceptances and just seeing where they're going. It just makes me really happy for all of us. And I know we're all probably just as excited for our new life, what's going to happen for us. So, all right. Thank you so much for your yeah, time. Kate. Of course. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you for watching, guys. Let's go to the hallway with MC Tea Time Talk. Turn it on, cook it up, make it boil, let it soak. Is it hot? Is it cold? What degree? Spill the tea. All right, what's your biggest pet peeve? Liars. Liars? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Thank you. Come on, just ask your question. It's one question. Come on. All right, what's up? Now I'll ask you. Come here, Faith. <laughs> Like, where you at? Come on, come on. What's your big, what's your biggest pet peeve? I don't know. Alright, <laughs> right, come on, face. Alright, what's your biggest pet peeve? My biggest pet peeve is people who don't stick up for themselves and do what they have to do. If you do that, <laughs> okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> All right, ready? What's your biggest pet peeve? Weird people. Weird people? Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. <laughs> Journey! Can you interview me? <laughs> Come on, Journey. Yeah. Come on. All right, what's something that you would like to confess? Something I would like to confess? Yeah, that people don't know about you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Wait. Are you gonna, you know, hidden talents or nothing? Um... I was in gymnastics in like third grade and I could do the splits. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, man. All right, man. What's up, man? All right. Um, what's your biggest pet peeve? Dumb questions. Dumb questions. Dumb questions. Like, like if you like, if you know the answer to the question, why would you ask me the question? You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. I yeah. feel you. I feel you. <laughs> Anthony, come on, man. Come on, man. It's one question. Hey, what is the question? It's one question. What you think about the dress for success policy? No. No. <laughs> no. 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 Why? Bro, don't, don't close weak. Don't close weak. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, I can't get in. Oh, okay. My fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. No fault. What you think about the dress for success policy? Hey, man. We should go back to uniform. Jared, I'm going to ask you a question, man. It's for MCH TV. What do you think about the Just for Success policy? Uh, I feel like that we don't need that and we should just wear what we got on. Why is it? Why you think that? Because, bro, like, why we need a, why we need that? It's comfortable. That's what it is. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Right, right. Okay, okay. 